Welcome to the Ed Newsstand Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Reynolds. This is Season 3, Episode 18 of the podcast, and this week's episode is entitled Google's Jamboard. Last week, I showed you how to utilize Keynote as a whiteboard, and I wanted to continue to provide you digital resources you could utilize as a whiteboard, and this week, it's Google's turn to showcase their product. We will showcase this week in the podcast various resources from several educators to get you started on your journey, whether you are a beginner or an expert on using Jamboard. I will also provide you resources from anybody teaching pre-K all the way up through 12th grade so you can really start to dive into the product. There are a lot of great resources ready and waiting for you this week. Let's dive in. You can see this week in the newsletter and podcast, I have a ton of resources and I will share each of these resources individually and talk about them. I don't really want to give a whole lot of time to them individually, um, but I do want to share them for you and then give you the opportunity to kind of dig into them at your own time and your own pace because they don't, they're not really for everybody. Um, they may fit the needs that you have in your classroom, but some of them may be for older students, some of them may be for younger students, some of them may be for people who are maybe are a little more advanced with Jamboard, some of them may be for beginners. So I will showcase them to you and if you wanna download them or use them or build off of them, you certainly can do that. Um, but the main crux of this is I just wanna get into Google Jamboard and introduce it to you and kind of show you some of the things that it can do um, as you get started on your journey using Google Jamboard because I think it's a great product. So Jamboard came out in um, late October of 2016, and I remember seeing it and thinking, this might be a game changer. And at the time, it was initially tied to Google's interactive whiteboard that they were trying to promote and, and get out into the market. And so when I looked at the, we didn't have Jamboards in our district at the time, the district that I was in, we had smart boards. Um, like probably a lot of people have smart boards or Promethean boards. People have been using Jamboard and I've been seeing things on Twitter and, and this and that. But when I really saw it take off was kind of last spring when distance learning became a thing for everybody. And Twitter um, and TikTok, it was really starting to grow rapidly and people were starting to share a lot of resources. And now late into last spring and early this fall and now up till now, I'm just kind of seeing Jamboard everything. And so I thought, all right, this is a great time. I showed Keynote last week and maybe you don't have an Apple device, maybe you don't have an Apple ID and so Keynote isn't the right move for you. So here's Google's version of a whiteboard for you that you can use on the go. So we're really gonna dive into this. I'll show you how you can use it on a computer or Chromebook and I'll show you how you can use it on an iPad because it works pretty much the same way on both. You have a few more tools on the computer, not too many. It's just structured a little bit differently. So I'll show you perspective from both of those. So to get started, I want to talk about this little projector screen right here. This is um, what Google Jamboard looks like. So if you wanna print this off, when you click on this, it will take you to my drawing resource. And the resource here you can print off and put next to your computer or in your notebook or whatever. It'll, it just kind of walks you through all of the tools in Jamboard. And they're pretty self-explanatory. And um, so you can see the tools aren't super robust, but they do provide you with um, several things you can do for yourself and with your students. And so if you really like using Google Slides, you're probably gonna like using Google Jamboard and you're gonna find Jamboard to be just as easy to use as Slides. So you have a few different pens to work with. Um, you have sticky notes that you can add and they come in multiple colors. Now you, you don't have a lot of colors. You have five, six colors, kind of the Google colors to utilize. You have some shapes that you can add and you have a text box. You don't have a whole lot of features with text. You know, you can do title and you can do normal and you can use the same um, six different Google colors to add. You share it the same way you would share any Google product. Um, and then you have your frames at the top. And we'll dig into the different backgrounds that you can set as well and how that can be um, helpful, powerful, um, and useful for both you and your students. So feel free to print this off um, and have this or just refer to it, refer back to it if you kind of don't remember what some of these tools are. So let's dive into Jamboard right now. I tried to structure my Jamboard similar to what I did with Keynote by giving some examples throughout my Jamboard um, and just showing you some of the things that you can do. And so I'm gonna work on my iPad and I'll show you how things can work on the computer at the same time. So if you th see things start to populate on my Jamboard, it's because I have my Apple Pencil and I'm working on my iPad. So you can see all your tools are over here on the side. We've got um, up here are your frames. So you can see I have, this is 
um, frame one of 16 in my Jamboard. If I click on the little arrow that drops down and expands my frame bar, so you can see all of my different frames that I have. And that's what they're called. They're not slides, they're called frames. You can easily move them around by just dragging the frame to reorder them. You can click the plus, it will just add a new frame. So I think that's kind of where we'll start. I'll click on this blank frame and I'll just click on the, the blank frame itself and it'll push all of my frames back up. So you can see here now I can set my background. So some of the cool things that you can do with your background is you can have different dots in your Jamboard. So if you have, if students need dots and maybe you want to use it so they can draw on it, you can have easily have students draw on it. I'm going to change my background to just have lined paper. So now students can take notes on here. We have a grid. So if you want to have the students do some graphing, um, you have some built-in graph paper for the students to do some built-in graphing. Here's some dark, like the dark theme graph paper if you wanted something a little bit darker. And then you can set your background color. So you have white, I have blue, and I have black for my background color. The other cool thing you can do is you can actually set your background as an image. So you have a few different options to do your background as a specific image. So this is really important when you are utilizing different frames. So for example, if I have this as my frame and I don't want students to mess with this, then I want to use this image as my background. Same for, um, I'm going to skip to frame number five. So this, I took this worksheet and I just took a picture of it and I added it as my background as an image. So now students can't mess with this image. They can't delete it. They can't erase it. They can just put things on top of it. So that's the best way I think to utilize an image. If you want something to stay locked in place, then you utilize using your image as a background and just drop it in that way. So we'll start with this. Kind of interesting here, you can have students do multiple things on here. So if you have students drop in a, um, a sticky note, so I've got this. I have students drop in cranium. So here's my sticky note. I can put it right here on the cranium. I can make it bigger or smaller. So now that can be right there. Um, if I am on my iPad, students can easily write on here. So this is the hip. And you can see as we write, it tells you exactly who's doing the writing based on the avatar that they have for their Google account. I have a pen up here as well, so I can write on here. Not so great with my mouse, but you kind of get the idea on how it is to write with a mouse. So let's go back a frame and talk about um, hiding things on Jamboard. So this ex for, is an example of um, in science class, if you wanted students to draw and maybe even label a DNA sequence, but first you wanted to, you've talked about it in class, but you wanted to showcase what that might look like. You can't link outside of Jamboard, at least in, in me working with it, I haven't been able to figure out how you can, um, like in Google Slides, add a link. So what I've done is I've kind of hidden the link in the Jamboard. So I put a little text box down here. Uh, or a little shape and a little text box. And so I would have to double click on this and I would have to copy and paste it into a new tab to then open up this resource. So it's just kind of hidden down here in the corner. Now, again, anybody who has access to the Jamboard can move it. So you have to kind of be careful on that. And so after you showed the video, then you could have students come back and you could have them um, do the DNA sequencing. So now let's look at some math examples. So the first thing I have here is a place value chart. So as the teacher, you could have a sticky note and you could drop in the sticky note and you could say 3,458 and you could say save. And now you've got this up here and you just want the students to put in 3,458. And the nice thing is the students can go onto their um, iPad and they can grab their colors and they could say, this is gonna be a five they can change their color to a red. This is gonna be an eight. They've got the blue. This is gonna be a four. And they've got their yellow, and this is gonna be a three. So you can see easily, you could have students work along with you and the colors are there based on this place value chart. And so they can just go in and kind of match the color and write their number in the specific part of the chart. And you can look through the chart very quickly and easily to see how students are doing in their on their place value chart. So a quick way for you to utilize some writing skills and easy for you to just change this sticky note. You can come in here and change this sticky note or you can easily just add a new sticky note if you wanted to do that. Next, let's take a look at some graphing. So you've got your a graphing example. So you can change this and you can set your background and choose some graph paper and then you could have students graph body parts versus number of bee stings. So students could easily just then grab their pen tool 
Students can draw a graph using the lines on the chart. And they can say right arm, right leg. And then they can mark these off two, four, six, eight. And then they can change their colors so that you can differentiate the graph. And we can say the right arm, and you can have them do as many as you want. And then they can kind of color that in. So you can have students work on graphing right in Jamboard on the graph paper. So kind of a fun way for students to interact. They, they get their graph paper. You don't have to actually hand them different colored pencils or anything. They have the colored pencils built right into their um, right into the Jamboard to work. And like I said, with the um, place value chart, you can click on the frames and see students working in real time and click and look at the different frames and join in with the students. Let's look at some social studies examples. Here you could do a little Venn diagram as students are working in their Venn diagram and you can ask them questions specifically about federalism. Here's just a quick poll or a collaborative frame that you could have students work in. You can ask them a question in the corner. Should politicians have no filter on social media? And students can easily just grab sticky notes and add sticky notes specifically to um, the Jamboard and just kind of populate this and you can work on this. So this is something similar to if you've used something in Nearpod where you've had kind of the cork board and you've had students be able to collaborate on the cork board. This is a nice way to do that just to kind of start a discussion, um, jump, start some, some thinking, some brainstorming. Uh, an easy way to just do that is just put something on the frame and have students go to work putting on different sticky notes. Let's look at some language arts examples. So last week in Keynote, we talked about Amanda Gorman's poem so students could go through. And you could do something similar to that in here where you had some sort of writing up here that you wanted students to dissect and, and research and look at. But you could also just have students write their own poems. So you could put up a picture of magnetic poetry and you could say, OK, I want you to find a word in the magnetic poetry and I want you to write me a poem based on a word that you see in the magnetic poetry. And it doesn't have to be long. Maybe you want the students to do a haiku. Um, Again, a lot of different ways to uh, come at this and have students working and collaborating on the same board. So some art examples, you can see here that I have a little video on here. So if you wanted students to draw what Stitch looks like, um, I have this just up here. You can, um, it's from Disney Studios. So you can see right on here that students can, we can watch the video and students could actually follow along on their own board and they could um, draw stitch or whatever else you wanted them to draw. And if you gave each student their own frame, then they could easily just write on the frame or draw on the frame and you could go through and you could look at their progress with how they're doing the drawing. So I'm gonna switch over now to my iPad. So now I've switched over to what my iPad looks like and you can see that um, it's it does look a little bit different. It's a little more bare. Um, but a lot of my tools are still here. Here are my pen tools. So you can see I have my colors. I have some assistive drawing on that I, if I want to do that, it'll convert it right to text. It'll help me with my shape. So if I want to draw a shape, right, I just click out here and I draw my shape and I hold and it'll create a perfect circle for me. Same with any sort of other thing I want to draw. So you do have some other tools with your assistive draw on there. And so if I draw a cat, so it'll help me down at the bottom and give me some assistive draw on that. So that's kind of a nice little feature on the iPad to help you with the with your drawing skills. If maybe you're not the greatest drawer or maybe you need a perfect circle or a perfect square, you can do your eraser. So if I choose my eraser and I do some just regular drawing on here and then I grab my eraser, you can see the little pencil shavings come off. I think that's kind of fun and nifty. If I press and hold on my eraser it'll actually ask me if it wants to clear the frame and then it will drop everything off my frame this is my select tool down here with the little plus I can insert many different things so here's my sticky note and I have my sticky note and you can see I have my pen tools right in my sticky note so I can if I write it'll actually convert it to text for me so I have that option because I'm using my pen and I can move this around wherever I want to this little tool down here is the laser pointer. So as I'm moving around, you can see I can highlight specific things. And you do have the laser pointer in on a computer or a Chromebook. But this really helps students highlight certain things. It's like, OK, right here, choose my little plus again. You can see I've got I can insert images. I can add stickers. So if I want to add a pointer onto my page, I can have students say, oh, I'm going to go back to my select tool. 
look at this specifically. This is very important that you notice this and realize this. You have your three dots at the top. This is where your link sharing and everything is. You can easily rename your Jamboard. Um, you can share the frame specifically as an image. I can share the Jam as a PDF. So a nice thing for students or, or parents, if you create a Jamboard and you wanna share that out, people don't have Google, easily share it out as a PDF to everybody. One thing I didn't mention though is within Jamboard, you are limited to only 20 frames. So kind of think about that when you're designing your Jamboard and how many frames you might need or might utilize. So if you have a different frame for each student, think about specifically um, how do you have more than 20 students in your class? Maybe you need to create two separate Jamboards for the students so that they have their own uh, template and frame to work on. And then you'll just have to check the two different frames for the students. If you don't have more than 20, then you're going to be just fine with students. And um, maybe each student doesn't get their own frame, but does your lesson need more than 20 frames to deliver to students? So that's kind of what Google Jamboard looks like, both on the iPad and on a Chromebook slash computer. So let's look at some of the resources that I have available for you here in the newsletter. So down at the bottom, I have the desk. It says getting started with Jamboard Google Teacher Center. So if you click on the desk, you'll be taken to Google Teacher Center and it will help you get started with Jamboard. There's a little video that you can watch. There are some training courses and product guides that you can look at. And there are plenty of other videos to utilize to get started using Jamboard. There's different tips and introduction to the app. So you can kind of look at this, especially if you are like, I'm, I'm not comfortable just diving into things. This is a great place for you to start to work on your Jamboard. On the desk here, I have um, class tech tips, some five quick Jamboard activities. So if you go over to the Jamboard activities and you scroll down, she'll give you a little uh, overview of what I just did, what is a Jamboard, but then here are your Jamboard activities. So you can listen to the 13 minute podcast, but then you can kind of go through here and you can see we talked about favorite things, um, there's a scale. We kind of talked about that last week with Keynote. You can do mind maps easy, picture word sorts. So dig into this. She's got some templates at the bottom, but this is class tech tips and Google Jamboard activities. The next resource is Ditch That Textbook. And you can, if you click on the computer, it will take you to the Ditch That Textbook. And here are 20 plus tips and ideas for using Jamboard in your classroom. And as you go through, Again, same overview, it'll talk about what Jamboard is, give you a, a little uh, overview like I did of what the numbers are and what everything is. But then you can see as you walk through, it will talk with you and give you different templates. So you can click on this these yellow links and get the different templates for your Jamboard. So if you're like, I don't know where to start, I'm, I'm kind of a little overwhelmed building the templates. I kind of want to try some of these brainstorming ideas. Well, don't worry. Ditch That Textbook has you covered. You can download these templates for free um, and start get started using Google Jamboard. Next is Brian Seppi. So I saw his TikTok and I thought I really need to incorporate him into this whole idea because he has a lot of great resources. So if you click on the video, like you've seen in my previous podcasts and newsletters, it will show you exactly what he's talking about. He has a book club template that you can utilize and the book club template, you cl click on the link over next to the image and that will take you to his book club template and you can download his book club template for free. And then on this same page, you'll be able to download several of his other Jamboard templates to use. And so you can look through these and see what he has for his Jamboard templates and how you can use those in your classroom. I also want to promote up at the top, Brian Seppi has, you can follow him on TikTok there. He also has a podcast, so you can listen to his podcast, People Who Teach. That is available for you, so there's a link to his podcast. And that link is, again, right here in the bottom corner, People Who Teach. The next resource comes from Tech Fairies and they have some different Jamboard ideas. And so I decided to actually incorporate their ideas right here in the newsletter because I thought a lot of people talk about the same thing. So it would be nice for you to be able to see a visual quickly of what you can do as far as like sketch noting and brainstorming or infographics, back channel help. So you could actually just have a Jamboard up and you could have students go in there if they need help or they have questions they could put their sticky note or something in the Jamboard and you could just refer or have the Jamboard up and be able to check in on it as you are maybe developing a lecture or maybe you students are working at their desk. Um, they, maybe they need some help quickly and they don't wanna raise their hand or they feel 
Um, like they don't want to ask a question in class, they could put their the help that they might need through a back channel on the Jamboard. Everybody would be able to see it, but that's okay. At least they wouldn't feel like they needed to use their voice in class. It would give them maybe a little bit more privacy. But if you click on the Jamboard ideas from the Tech Fairies, it will take you to their website and you can see the 10 Google Jamboard activities and you just scroll through and it will give you a little background and recommendation of how you can utilize this and there are some images to show you exactly what some things look like. A lot of great resources here from the Tech Fairies. This was actually one of the first things that I added to my Google Jamboard newsletter and it came from Holly Clark of the Infused Classroom. So you can click on this image here on the phone and it will actually take you to her tweet and it talks about Google Slides versus Google Jamboard and so this will really kind of break down for you specifically what the differences are right so Google Slides very text heavy you're doing a lot of the heavy lifting yourself by building the Google Slides where Jamboard is is more the movement more the interaction more the whiteboard right the, it that's why it has the sticky notes that's why um, it kind of wants you to limit only to 20 frames. It's really just a whiteboard for you to to work out some of these collaborative things. Slides can be collaborative, and as we've seen and as I've talked about on this podcast and shown you in the newsletter, um, Slides has a lot more options for uploading sound and different things like that, but they really do have their own place. So you can click on this, and you can also check out the infused link.jamboard. And that infused link is actually right here. It says infused classroom. And it will take you to this her website here on Jamboard. And so what students and teachers should know about Jamboard. So there's a video that you can watch and then different ways that you can utilize the Jamboard. And again, free templates for you to start to utilize Jamboard, get, get working, dive in um, just to get started. Because again, I know it can be a little overwhelming. You're like, oh, this looks great, but it's kind of a lot. And I have a lot going on on my plate right now. But just baby steps. Take it. Take it easy. Um, try one thing and maybe just one slide. Don't build a million slides. But you can see here group analysis. This is a Jamboard that a teacher is using. So you've got students highlighting different things in the Jamboard to um, specifically talk about um, analyzing some type of text. You've got different ways to use Jamboard for math. There's some elementary Jamboard ideas. And again, tons of templates for you to utilize. If you want to follow Holly Clark on Twitter, I have her little Twitter link down here. So you can click on this and follow her on Twitter. She has a lot of great resources. She's also on TikTok. So there's a lot of resources here. So the last resource that I have here for you is Kevin Stratford. He has an 18 minute video about how to use Google Jamboard. And so I talked about some ideas specifically in Google Jamboard. But if you wanted to watch his video, again, it's very short. He's got it segmented out. You can look at exactly how to use um, Google Jamboard. And it is. 18 minutes is pretty short, but it'll give you a nice little walkthrough about utilizing Google Jamboard. And then the last resource here is this little wakelet, the ultimate collection of Jamboard ideas. So you can see here Jamboard templates. You can just click through here and it's tons and tons and tons of Jamboard templates that you can use for blackout poetry, playing memory, um, third grade, mathematics, a lot of great resources on the Wakelet. Just click on the little blue button in the top left-hand corner of the newsletter and be able to check out all of the great resources and templates that are available um, for Google Jamboard. Maybe a little bit overwhelming, but I wanted to provide you again a lot of resources that you might use or might need for Google Jamboard to kind of get you started. But it is a wonderful whiteboard for you to use in class, especially in this time of distance learning because you can have students um, on the computer in, at their house working. You can actually have students working in your classroom um, and it feels very collaborative um, and very close-knit similar to some of the ways that we talked about last week in the keynote. That's it for this episode of the Ed Newsstand Podcast. I really appreciate you listening to the podcast or watching the video version on YouTube because I know your time is valuable. I'd like to thank Class Tech Tips for their activities, Brian Seppi and People Who Teach Podcast for some inspiration, Holly Clark at Infused Learning for all her great resources, Matt Miller at Ditch That Textbook for his templates, and Kevin Stratford for his Jamboard video on YouTube. Remember, you can follow me on social media on Twitter at Reynolds Troy or on Instagram at Ed Newsstand. If you're listening on any podcast platform and would like to hear more, please like and subscribe to receive updates and have any new episode automatically downloaded for you. You can also revisit my previous episodes on any major podcasting platform like Spotify, Anchor.fm, 
Apple Podcasts, or iHeartRadio. Finally, if you'd like to download my app to have my podcast and newsletters right on your smart device, please check it out at ednewsstand.glideapp.io and save it to your home screen. If you don't want the app but would like to check out my resources, please visit my website at ednewsstand.weebly.com. This is Troy Reynolds, and this is the Ed Newsstand Podcast, hoping you were able to take away at least one idea for your classroom. Please be safe. Until next time.